gardeners welcome back to my channel my name is Trisha and I feel like I have not filmed a video in weeks because it kind of has been I've been working so much and been so busy lately so I have not been able to film as much it's also been holidays so I've been kind of taking a little bit of a break and just working my butt off um, but the schedule is still going to be a little bit different and I'm going to be working a lot so because of that I think that I'm just going to produce one video a week rather than two a week um, it may not stay that way, I'll just see how it goes, but like, I don't know, I just, I'm not gonna be able to do two videos a week with how much I'm working, I'm like so tired, my health is not great either, so like, I need a little bit of a break, so I'd appreciate if you guys are okay with that, let me know what you think, um, but yeah, I think I'm just gonna end up with one video a week, maybe I'll do two if I, like, I can somehow manage to come up with the content, but either way, either way we are going to jump into today's video, which is going to be reviewing your guys' reptile enclosures. So you guys actually submitted these like so long ago. Maybe like two weeks ago. I don't know. My sense of time is all over the place these days. Um, so I basically just had you guys send me your reptile enclosures. This one was not specific because I feel like you guys ask me so many times to submit your reptile enclosures. And when I pick a certain theme, then you guys aren't able to show the ones that you want to show. So this one is going to be very unspecific. It's just all reptiles. And in the future, I'll do another amphibians one. And I think I might just do like non-specific reptile reviews like this because I want you guys to be able to share all of your enclosures. All right, so before I start, a lot of you guys submitted like multiple enclosures and I have way too many submissions of people. So I'm only picking one of your submissions. So I hope that you guys aren't going to be angry by that, but like there's just way too many I have to get through, so I can't do multiple for each person. So the first one that we are going to do is from Kara and Kermit. So we are looking at a desert-themed Mexican black king snake enclosure. I don't have much experience with them. Like I literally have zero experience. I didn't even know that they come from a desert because I literally don't know anything about them. So I'm learning something new today, but this looks really, really cool. Um, I'm interested if you are using live or fake plants. I really can't tell. They look very naturalistic. I like the background that you have. Um, I'm also just kind of curious how big your snake is because this does look like kind of a smaller enclosure. Um, so over time, I'm sure that you will be upgrading, but that is something that I would recommend like as your snake grows. I have no idea how big it is. I can't even see it in the enclosure, so I'm assuming it's just in a hide. Um, it looks like you have two main hides. I would possibly add maybe a couple more hides or different things to climb on throughout the enclosure. Other than that, it looks like you have a lot of different textures and feels throughout this enclosure, which is fantastic and a lot of great enrichment. So yeah, you're doing an amazing job. Thank you so much for sharing that. The next one up is Sagittarian Reptilian. So this is a 5 by 3 by 2 enclosure for a blue tongue skink. This is amazing. Like, it just looks so beautiful. I love all of the live plants in here, and it is so spacious. The whole back wall is, like, a naturalistic background with plants growing into it. Like, it is just fantastic. Like, I would live in there. That is just so beautiful. It is also bioactive, so she has different microfauna in there. That is just so cool. Um, uh, the only thing that I would recommend, because it is a skink, um, it's kind of hard. I may not be able to see it in the photo, but they do love to burrow. I'm not sure you may have just a very thick substrate layer, um, but maybe adding some cork bark rounds or different things for your skink to hide in, I think would be a good idea, but that would literally be my only recommendation because everything else just looks spot on and so amazing. Next up, we have Brendab, and we are looking at a ball python enclosure. So I'm not sure what size this tank is. You may just have a small ball python at this time. It might just be a baby. Um, I would recommend to upgrade over time to at least a four foot enclosure for a ball python. Um, but obviously if it's smaller, you can keep it in something smaller for the time being. And it looks like you have really filled out this enclosure. There's different things to climb on, different enrichment. Um, there's, it looks like there's multiple hides. They're also like hidden. So I'm sure that there's a lot for your ball python to do in this enclosure. Um, this looks fantastic. I personally love naturalistic backgrounds, so I think that that would even add even more enrichment. And you can also add 
um, climbing features with the naturalistic backgrounds as well. So I've noticed that my ball pythons love that, so I would also recommend it for you to do as well, maybe when you do an upgrade. But for now, this looks fantastic, so thank you so much for sharing it. Next up, we have Angelina Jane. And this is for crocodile skinks. So I'm not too familiar with crocodile skinks, but I am aware that they love to hide and be away from people and they have a very high humidity level. So keeping that in mind and looking at this enclosure, it looks like the humidity is probably doing fantastic um, because you have tons of live plants. There's a naturalistic background. It looks very moist. Uh, the substrate looks great. Um, it looks like you have a water feature on the right side of the enclosure. It's kind of hard to tell from the photo, um, but that would be fantastic for a crocodile skink. And then I can't even see the skink in here, so maybe it's hiding somewhere, which is fantastic. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I might possibly add more hides just because I can't particularly see it through this photo, but you may already have enough. But that would literally be my only recommendation because this looks really great. Next up, we have Spacey. So this is for a corn snake. This is so stunning. Oh my goodness. Like I want to live in there. That looks like a little fairy kingdom. Oh my goodness. So there's just plants and enrichment. There's like, I don't know what type of wood that is, but it looks really gorgeous. And that is so fantastic because I know that your corn snake is probably climbing all over that. They are so adventurous and active. So to give them things to climb on is such a good form of enrichment for them. And I'm sure that that does an amazing job. I kind of want to add that to my corn snake enclosure now. So I'm getting a little bit of inspiration from this. And the background is just so stunning. There's so many different textures. And oh my goodness, this is just A+. plus. Like, I love this. Thank you so much for sharing it. Next up, we have we Weezand Co. Hopefully I said that correctly. We are looking at a leopard gecko enclosure. So this looks so pretty. I love that. It looks like you're using tile as the background, which is creative. I like that. It's giving some different types of textures. Um, it looks like there's a lot of different things to climb on throughout this enclosure. Some fake plants. There's like a little tunnel. I think that this looks great for a leopard gecko. I'm curious as to what size this is. I may recommend to just upgrade possibly because leopard geckos are just so active. I think that people... Like, it's crazy that people say that a 20 gallon is okay for them because I just think that they just deserve so much more space. Um, this does look obviously bigger than a 20 gallon. I'm just not really sure because I can tell it's an exoterra and I, I do not know exoterra sizes, unfortunately. Um, but this does look very spacious, but maybe I would potentially recommend to just do an upgrade. Um, you do have a lot of different textures and feels. The PVC hide... I would recommend to decorate that just to match the aesthetic of the rest of the enclosure. Maybe put some like moss around it or something. I think that that would look really cool and just like it would just blend in better with everything else in the enclosure. But um, I can see that you have multiple hides in here. That's fantastic. It looks like you're doing a great job and I love that you have a Cloud Forest Design label as well. They are the best. It, look, it just makes the enclosure look so nice. So yeah. Thank you so much for sharing this one. Next up, we have EFG Exotics, and we are looking at a Crested Gecko enclosure. So, oh my goodness, I have the same type of fake plant, that purple one that has stripes on it, and I love it. It's so pretty, and it looks so real. Um, so yeah, it looks like you have some cork, different sticks, different things to climb on. Um, I'm curious as to what size this enclosure is. Um, I would definitely recommend an 18 by 18 by 24, but that might be what this is. Sometimes it's hard to tell in photos. Um, another thing that I would recommend is to add more horizontal climbing features throughout this enclosure. I think that your gecko would definitely utilize it. I've noticed with mine that if you, I see you already have a cork bark piece. If you get a hollowed out piece that's like a tube and you put it across the enclosure and silicone it, they will literally just like hide in that all day and love it. Like they just, it's a perfect spot for them to hide and feel secure during the day. And then they can also climb on it as well. So it's just a great form of enrichment. I think that would really help fill out the space at the top as well. And then you would be set to go. So that would be my only real recommendation for this. Other than that, you're doing a fantastic job. Thank you so much for sharing it. Next up we have, I'm going to mess this up, Chavalet Gashenur. Oh my goodness, that was really hard. I'm really sorry if I said that wrong. 
So we are looking at a five by four by two custom enclosure with internal builds done by you using your method. It's split in half with two snakes completely separate from each other. It's currently housing a juvenile BCI named Pandora and my juvenile genetic striped reticulated python named Maharat. Maharat? I don't know. Hopefully I said that correctly. <laughs> Um, each snake is currently only around 4.5 feet or so long. These girls will definitely be upgraded as they grow. So this is a very creative enclosure. This thing is massive, by the way. And it's the both of the snakes will definitely be getting a lot bigger, but she said that she will be upgrading. So temporarily for how it is now, this is a great idea. And it's very creative because a lot of people are interested in doing this and having a divider in one enclosure. So this is a really creative and beautiful way to do it. It looks stunning. Um, I would be a little bit concerned. I think that you're using fabric fake plants. I would recommend to maybe use plastic instead just because it's a little bit cleaner. Um, but other than that, looks like there's some different things to climb on and it looks gorgeous and is very spacious for your snakes for the time being. So this is a really creative idea and I'm really glad that you shared it. And your snakes are beautiful, so beautiful. Next up we have Taylor M101099. This is my Irinjaya Blue Tongue Skink Churches enclosure. It is a Marty made 50 gallon low about four feet, two feet by 18. I use Josh's Frog's bio bedding and ABG mix for the substrate and leaf litter. I want to go bioactive so badly, but every time I get plants for him, he crushes them with his fat body. Completely understand that. That's why my blue tongue does not have any live plants because they will literally, like he digs everything up and he's a chunk, like they would not stand a chance, unfortunately. Um, the hide is built into the background. That's so cool and is made out of cork wood. It has an opening in the middle and an opening on each side. I hope you like it. A lot of the inspiration came from me and Chancho. That's so cool. So this enclosure is gorgeous. I love this. It is so full of enrichment. It's so colorful. It's the perfect size for a blue tongue skink. Like you can see, it's very spacious. Oh my goodness. This is just stunning. I absolutely love this. And your skink is so cute. To, I don't have any recommendations for this, honestly. It looks like you completely decked it out. There's hides everywhere. It's just fantastic. It looks like there's a thick layer to burrow in. I love the label that you're using. I love everything about this. Thank you so much for sharing it. Next up, we have JP Lizard World. And we are looking at the Baby Boyd's Porous Dragon Enclosure. These are one of my dream lizards of all time. They are so, so stunning. And this enclosure is stunning as well. It is so beautiful. I'm not sure what size this is. It does look very spacious though, which is fantastic. I love all of the green. There's a lot of different climbing opportunities. The background is amazing. The substrate looks great. Like, I don't think I have any recommendations for this because I think this looks so great. Like, you've done an amazing job. I would love to see more photos of your Boyd's Forest Dragons because they're just so, so, so stunning. I love them so much. So thank you so much for sharing this setup as well. Next up, we have Ryan's Reptiles 13. We are looking at a ball python enclosure. I'm not sure what size this is, but it is a tan. I would recommend to upgrade as your ball python grows to a 4x2 enclosure. Obviously, if it's smaller for now, this is definitely suitable. Um, it looks like there's so much green, there's so much enrichment, different things to go in for your ball python. The only thing I would recommend for this is more horizontal climbing space, maybe to fill it up at the top. Um, ball pythons actually love to climb. A lot of them, It's I've actually done a lot of research lately, and it says that they're actually semi-arboreal. A lot of them hunt in the wild from up in the trees, and they have a more arboreal stance. They eat a lot of arboreal foods like birds. So it makes more sense to give them a lot of climbing opportunity, and that's something that I've learned recently. So that's something that I would add to this enclosure, but other than that, it looks fantastic. Next up, we have JJ's Reptile World, and we are looking at her Savannah Monitor enclosure. Crap, I did not save the size, but I know that this enclosure is like literally massive. It's so big. I don't remember the size though, so if you're watching this, please comment the size of your enclosure because everyone needs to know. Like, this is fantastic. Like, savannah monitors are like one of those animals that I'm kind of like, I don't know if they should be pets because a lot of the times they are just not taken care of properly or they aren't given enough space. 
But in this case, she has gone completely all out and given this animal so much opportunity for enrichment. She really studied the environment in which they come from and applied that in this enclosure, which just makes it so amazing. Um, there's a lot of different, like there's like this grass growing on the right side because they come from these grasslands and there's like different things to climb on, different spots to burrow in. It just looks fantastic. I think there's actually live plants growing throughout the enclosure as well, which is just so great. Like this is so cool. Um, yeah, I don't really have any recommendations for this because I think that this is like one of the more ideal setups to have a Savannah monitor in just because... A lot of people just don't know, especially because they buy them when they're tiny little babies and then they do not expect them to turn into little dinosaurs, but Jordan knows what she's doing and this is fantastic. Next up we have Fragment Terrariums and we have a beautiful looking, I think it's a banana ball python, it is so pretty. This enclosure is so pretty. It does look like it is an exoterra, so again, as your ball python does grow, I would recommend a 4 by 2 enclosure for when it's an adult, but for now, this is like, you have completely decked out this enclosure. It is so full of different hiding places and textures and feels and colors, just everything. This is beautiful. And your ball python, I'm like in love with your ball python. It's so cute. Thank you so much for sharing this. Okay, wait, we have one more from them just because this enclosure is also just so pretty and I love it. So this is Fragment Terrariums again, and this is for Emerald Swifts. So I'm not familiar with Emerald Swifts very much. I have seen them and I think that they're gorgeous, but I do not, I've never like researched their care. I, I may have researched their care, but it was like literally like probably like 10 years ago <laughs> because I remember I saw them at Petco and I thought that they were cool. But looking at this enclosure, it is like the most beautiful naturalistic three-dimensional background with plants growing into it and just like enrichment galore. So I just had to share this one as well. Next up we have Bobby Sue Karate. Um, and we are looking at an enclosure for a spiny tailed Mexican, no, it's a Mexican black spiny tailed iguana. I was like mixing up all the words. So I don't have much experience with these guys at all. Um, I don't really, are they arboreal? I would think that they are arboreal. Um, this kind of looks like it's like a four by two enclosure. So if it is an arboreal lizard, I would recommend to maybe upgrade and maybe do exactly what you're doing, but then stack like another enclosure on top of it. So that way it's like four feet tall. Um, honestly, the bigger the better when it comes to any reptile, especially iguanas. Um, but it looks like your iguana is probably still small, so this is suitable for the time being. Um, this is very, very cool looking. I can't really see what's in there, but I do see that there's like a couple of plants, a couple things to climb on. I would just recommend to add a little bit more textures and feels, maybe a little bit more, just fill it out with things to climb on a little bit more on the left side. Um, but I can't really see too much of what's going on, so maybe I'm just missing part of it. But thank you so much for sharing this setup. Next up is a Leonard 529, and this is a Euromastix. Is it Euromastix or Euromastix? Because I don't know, and I'm not confident in saying it because I feel like I always thought it was a Euromastix, but people call it a Euromastix. No, I don't know. I'm confusing myself. Anyway, let's look at this enclosure. I love the background on this enclosure that's so creative. You may have painted it yourself, which is really cool. It looks like everything is spot on for a Euromastix, Euromastix, I don't know if I'm saying it correctly. Um, but there's different hiding places, different things to climb on. I don't really know too much about them. I haven't done too much research on them, but from what I would assume, this looks like a great enclosure for one. So thank you so much for sharing it. Next up, we have Carly the Chameleon. Um, so it looks like you, I'm not sure what size this enclosure is. I would recommend to use a four foot when it is an adult. That might be what this is. It's just hard to tell in photos. Um, so it looks like you have a couple of different things to climb on and some plants at the bottom. I would completely fill this out more with plants. Um, you can find a lot at Michael's. I would recommend to use a lot of plastic plants if possible. You can even go to Home Depot and just make sure you wash off corn plants. And those are fantastic and will help fill it out as well and offer your chameleon something else to climb on. 
So you just really want to fill out this enclosure just because they can properly hydrate themselves, have more opportunity to hide, and it will decrease their stress levels. But other than that, it looks like you are off to a fantastic start. Next up we have T. Whistler, and this is for Periwinkle, who is in a 30 by 13 by 13 because she has vision issues, and this is a leopard gecko. Oh, your poor leopard gecko, I'm sorry she has vision issues. Um, so because of that, that's why it's in like a smaller enclosure. This still looks pretty spacious for a leopard gecko. Um, it looks like you have some plants throughout this enclosure, maybe a couple of different hides, which is great. I would maybe add some cork bark or different types of wood to this enclosure. I know that your gecko doesn't see very well, but maybe just like different textures and feels that you can have to climb throughout the enclosure. You don't want to put it up too high because you don't want your gecko to fall because they can't see very well. Um, but that might be something to add. And that would probably be my only recommendation other than maybe possibly doing a naturalistic background just because I'm obsessed with them. It's not required. Not everyone has to do that. It's just something that I love to see, so I always recommend it. Next up, we have pineapple pizza. We are looking at a gorgeous blue-eyed leucistic ball python enclosure. Oh my goodness, I love blue-eyed Lucy so much. So again, as your ball python grows, I'm sounding like a broken record. I would recommend a 4 by 2 when it becomes an adult. Um, just because it's like they need a lot of space. These snakes are actually very active. Everyone thinks ball pythons are not active. They are. And that's why I also love this enclosure too because it looks like you do have a couple of different things to climb on throughout this enclosure, which is fantastic because they definitely will utilize that. Um, something else I would add is maybe some more um, plants. Definitely some plants and foliage. It will also make your snake feel more secure and just add more enrichment overall to the enclosure. Next up is Misha's Mini Zoo, and we are looking at a crested gecko enclosure. So right now the gecko is a baby, and she will be upgrading as the gecko grows. Right now this is fantastic. It is so, so, so filled out, which is so good because your gecko is going to feel nice and safe and secure. Um, as long as it can find its food dish, then there's really no problem. Um, I'm, I mean, it's so filled out, I don't think you can even, like, have any horizontal climbing space. Maybe tilt that giant piece of cork bark and put it on the side for horizontal climbing space. I don't know, I'm just getting different ideas. Right now it looks very filled out, I would just add maybe some different things to climb on. Um, but yeah, it's like completely filled out, I don't even think you can add anything else to this. So, looks like you're doing a great job, I can't wait to see the upgrade when you upgrade your gecko when it grows. Next up we have ZA Reptiles and we are looking at Crikey's Enclosure. He is my favorite jeweled Lacerta. I love him. He's so stunning and this enclosure is so stunning too. I was so excited when she set this up. Oh my goodness. It's a three-dimensional background, naturalistic background, which is just so stunning. I love it. She has live plants. There's different cork tubes and things that Crikey can hide in. He can burrow. He can climb throughout this entire enclosure. It is amazing. I think that she said he's starting to kill some of his plants. Or maybe they were just dying. Maybe it wasn't his fault. I don't know. But hopefully they're still okay. Because this is just so, so gorgeous. I love this setup. I think it's a 4 by 2 something enclosure. So it's very spacious. And she just hit this one out of the park. So thank you so much for sharing this, Zoe. Next up we have TF Reptiles. It is a chameleon enclosure. This looks extra tall, which is fantastic. It looks like you're using a Monstera, which is so cool. I didn't know that those were reptiles safe. It's never something I've really thought about, but that was such a gorgeous addition to a reptile enclosure. Um, it looks like there's some pothos at the top. It's really filled up. There's different things to climb on. I mean, I don't even know if I have anything to add. Maybe a couple more vines. Maybe some cork bark. That would probably be my only recommendations because other than that, this is beautiful. Next up is Nelly. We are looking at a crested gecko enclosure. I'm not sure what size this is, but it's cool because it's like rounded at the front. Um, so it looks like very filled out. There's a lot of different plants. It looks like there's there might be a fog machine going on in there. Um, very cool. I would definitely want to fill it out more with plants and more horizontal climbing space. I'm not sure if you're going to be able to do that with this just because the doors are rounded, but if you can, that would be something that I would recommend just because they do love to climb so much. 
Um, but yeah, other than that, I would just kind of fill it out a little bit more. It looks like you're doing a lot at the bottom. I would maybe raise some of that up at the top as well. And then next up we have Natty Monette, another veiled chameleon enclosure. Wow, this thing is really freaking cool. And it looks very spacious. I'm curious what size this enclosure is too. So if you could tell me, please let me know. Um, this one is decked out. It looks so good. Here's a naturalistic background. There's just vines everywhere and plants everywhere. Like, I want to move in. This is fantastic. Thank you so much for sharing it. All right, next up we have Maddie Monet, or Monette. I'm not sure if I'm saying it correctly. This is a 4 by 2 by 2 Zen Habitat for One Spoiled Crusty Gecko. This is so cool. So Zen Habitat has 2 by 2 by 2 enclosures, which are perfect for Crusty Geckos. She basically doubled that which is like so amazing. Like this is one spoiled crested gecko. There's so much space. Um, oh my goodness. And it looks so pretty. There's just plants everywhere. Oh, this is fantastic. The only thing I would recommend for this, because they love to climb so much, it would be really cool if you could put vines throughout this entire enclosure. Then your gecko can jump like on the vines and then to the side of the wall. And I just think that it would just add more um, features for climbing for your gecko, which they would definitely love. Other than that, like, you've done such a good job filling this out. That's so much space to fill out, too. Like, this is amazing. That is, like, the most spoiled crested gecko of all time. Next up is Fatzel the Ball Python, and this enclosure looks like a 4 by 2 enclosure. Very spacious, different hides, plants all over, different forms of enrichment. I love the moss. There's a monstera. Again, just fantastic. This is really cool because there is a hide that they put upside down on the ceiling. That way the ball python could literally hide in the ceiling. That is so creative. I love that. Thank you so much for sharing all of this because it's so inspirational. And as I mentioned earlier, ball pythons are being researched a lot lately and a lot of people are finding them to be semi-arboreal and they do like to hunt from above. So having a feature like this on the ceiling is such a great idea because your ball python could even hunt from being up there and then feel very safe and secure within that hide. So just amazing. I love this so much. Next up is Christian Apfler. And this is a Veiled Chameleon again. This is so decked out and so creative and cool. Oh my goodness. It's so cool. There's like a door that opens in the middle and then there's like a huge screen. Like that is so cool. Did you make this yourself? Like I'm very curious. This is so cool. Um, there's vines and plants ever. I don't have anything to add. This is like such an amazing enclosure. Thank you so much for sharing it. All right, and that completes all of the enclosures for today's video. So thank you to everyone who has shared. It is so inspirational, and I love seeing your guys' setups. I can't wait to do this again. There will always be more submissions, so feel free to send them my way. Just pay attention to my story because I only accept them once I put them up in my story. So, yeah, thank you guys so much for sharing and being here today. I hope that you guys had an amazing Happy New Year, and I will see you guys in the next video.